Hi! So I just wanted to make another video to kind of follow up on the one that I just posted. <laughs> because I know a lot of people are probably like, why would I want to go and feel sad and feel that pain and, and process through scary memories and experiences? It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good, but only for a little bit. And then it starts to feel so much better. And I'm here to tell you that. <laughs> And so I just want to encourage you to keep going. I really wanted to post a video to demonstrate what vulnerability looks like, what it looks like to process through that pain. And although that wasn't when I was really crying about it, but I at least I got to show you a little bit. But then I wanted to tell you that I'm fine, that I processed through that emotion. I was sad for a little bit. It didn't ruin my day. It didn't ruin my weekend. Like everything is, everything's fine. And so I just want you to see that. I want you to see that once you start this process, when you really surrender to it, yeah, you're going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to remember things that you do not want to remember. You are going to go through moments where it's just going to be very, very painful but every time you get through that moment in a healthy way, every time you go and love who you are by connecting to the inner child, every time you tell yourself, I'm worth it, so I'm going to go and I am going to process through this emotion, that's self-love. That's what I'm trying to get us to do, love who we really are so that we don't have to try to get the our void filled by everything and everyone else because that's not healthy. We need to learn how to do that for ourselves because, for example, this is kind of an extreme, maybe an extreme example, but I'm going to say it anyway. Let's say somebody's sitting there and, you know, instead of wanting to process through that emotion, they start to have the memory and they don't even realize it because of most of this is very subconscious, which is why I'm trying to bring it to the conscious level of awareness because we can't process through it if we don't remember it. We can't make the connections if we don't look at it, if we don't start to understand it, if we don't become aware of it. So that's why a lot of our behaviors are driven by the subconscious. This is a true statement. But the more we sit and look at things that we actually do and we think about the fear and we think about the feelings and we go back and we start thinking about some of the things that did happen to us and we recognize, you know what, that probably did affect me more than I think. That's when we can start connecting the dots. But that's a good thing. That's where I'm trying to get you to go. Because let's say... Okay, somebody's like trying to process through an emotion or something got triggered and they're feeling a certain kind of way. Instead of processing through the emotion, what a lot of people do, this is just an example. Let's say, okay, I'm going to go to the bar and I'm going to go have a drink and I'm going to go meet some guy and I'm going to start flirting with him and I'm going to let him buy me a drink and then let him tell me that I'm super pretty and so I can feel wanted and so I can feel... You know, like somebody values me and likes me and, well, hey, I might just get drunk so I can totally numb the pain and not have to think about anything. And then we're going to go home and have sex. And that's going to make me feel some fake sense of closeness with somebody. And then I'm going to wake up the next day and probably regret it. I don't know. I've never done that before. Like that's never been one of the my patterns but I know a lot of people that do that it's not a judgment I'm just giving you an example of something that we might tend to do when we're not feeling good about who we are instead of not feeling good about who I am well I'm just gonna go and completely numb the pain instead so I'm like what in that scenario actually demonstrated self-love what in that scenario actually made you feel better but the thing is, we do things like that all the time because in that moment, it feels good, doesn't it? It feels good for a second on some level. It's thrilling. It's exciting. We felt wanted. We felt needed. Um, we felt good enough. We felt seen, whatever it was for you. And so that's why that's a go-to for a lot of people, either alcohol or sex. That's normal. Drugs, that, that's normal. It's what a lot of us do. Um 
But when you do that, you're disconnecting from who you are. You're disconnecting from yourself. You're not going within and loving who you are by processing through that emotion. That's that's why I'm telling you that. If you don't go within and start processing through your emotions, you live your whole life reaching for the crutch, continuing the toxic cycle, staying stuck in situations that aren't even, that's not even making you happy and you don't even realize it because you just keep hoping that someday magically things will get better. But how can things get better if you don't make them better? They, they won't. You have to make them better. But a lot of times we're not even strong enough to do that. And that's where I've been for many, 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 many years. I stayed in all kinds of toxic cycles because it was safe. I got to feel angry. I got to feel upset. I got to go and piss people off. I got to go and stir up drama or talk shit or do whatever it was that I did to completely avoid how much pain I was actually in because I didn't want to go there with myself. I didn't even realize that that was happening, which is another reason why I started this channel. Because, yeah, on some level, I knew all these things happened to me, but I just thought, okay, well, they happen. It sucks, and now my life sucks, and I'm just this angry person that likes to go shopping and likes to obsess and just do different things to just to try to get through it. And I didn't even realize, oh, if I start processing through my emotions, I can actually start to feel better (laughs) because I would cry all the time. I'm like, wait a minute, I do process through my emotions. No, I didn't. That's why I said that last time when you are in that state of depression, that state of darkness, of emptiness, that's not you processing through your emotions. That's when we're going to start to reach for the crutch because the darkness starts to kick in and it's like, I don't want to feel this. I don't want to go there. It doesn't feel good. It's very painful. But within that darkness, what we don't realize is there's somebody who doesn't feel good enough. There's somebody who feels unworthy. There's somebody who feels unlovable. Therefore, nobody wants to be close with me. I'm going to be constantly abandoned and rejected. And that is a huge fear for all of us. That's normal. So if I actually sit there and think about it and realize that, you know how scary that feels? Yes, I do know how scary that feels. So I would rather go and get drunk, go seek a thrill, go people please, go shopping, whatever compulsion or addiction, whatever that is for you. Everybody has their own behavior pattern and you have to understand what yours is because yours is going to be different than mine. And it's not a judgment. It's just what we do. And so become aware of what it is that you do, because when you see yourself doing these things, that's when you know that you're actually in pain and you're the only one that can do anything about that in that moment. Are you going to go within and connect to the inner child and try to connect to that emotion and release that toxic energy? Or are you going to ignore it and go for the thrill instead? You're going to go for the self-destruction. What are you going to do? You're going to go for the self-sabotage? None of those things say self-love. All of those things say, get away from me. I have a wall up. I'm guarded. I'm pushing everything out. So we start to push everything out. So when do we ever really connect with other people either? We might connect to them on a, in an unhealthy way on a disconnected level and not even realize it. It depends on you. What kind of relationships do you want? What do you want for your life? If you're watching my channel and you've surrendered to this process, I hope you're starting to see that you are in control of your life. And do you want to face your fears or do you want to keep running from yourself? Because what we're doing is we're running from us, from who we are. Instead of loving who we are. Every time you go for the crutch, you're running from yourself. It's not a judgment. I did it my whole life and I didn't realize it. And now that I've learned to process through my emotions, I can't even explain how much better I start that I feel just in general. Because I'm not out there, you know, partying it up and doing all these things, you know, I'm just living a simple life, but I feel more connected. I feel more whole within myself. I feel a sense of joy. I just feel 
I don't feel dark anymore. And that is the greatest feeling in the world. But I wanted to show you guys the last video to, to show you what it looks like to cry. And I, I couldn't cry that much. I just wasn't in that moment. Uh, otherwise, I would have. But I did cry about it before a lot more. And it hurt for just like a couple minutes. And then that was it. And before that, I was feeling so anxious and I could tell I pay attention to my body now. I pay attention to my behaviors. It's like, okay, I'm getting antsy. I'm starting to feel anxious. I'm starting to feel really irritated right now. Why? What's happening? It's like, well, I just watched that video and then I started remembering a time when I, um, let's say I tracked, it was raining outside. Let's say I tracked mud in the house. And then all of a sudden, my dad comes over to me and just starts yelling and beats my ass for tracking mud in the house. And all I'm thinking is, I, I, it was an accident, and I could have cleaned it up pretty easily, and, and it wouldn't have been a big deal. But no, that's not what happened. He made it a big deal, and it was scary, and it was painful, and it hurt. It hurt to hear him call me names. Go there with yourself, because that's the pain, and that's okay. And every time you go and you connect to those memories, those experiences, you're validating that part of you that's in pain. And that's a good thing. We need to validate our feeling. Our feelings are valid. If I'm telling you that I'm feeling afraid right now, if I'm telling you that I'm feeling like I'm not good enough for whatever reason, I don't need you to tell me I'm not. I need you to to understand that that is how I'm feeling and to say it's okay. Same thing with your inner child. When you start to get triggered, we get triggered, we don't realize it, which is why you have to start making the connection between the triggers and your behaviors. Look at your behaviors. They're going to tell you that something's going on. And so, like I said, I started to feel that tension. I knew that I needed to cry and I did. So once I looked at the memory and I looked at that little girl and I really sat and and got vulnerable and I really went there with myself for a few minutes. I cried about it. I thought about what she was feeling and how lonely she felt and how hurt she felt and how afraid she felt. And once I released those tears of toxicity once I released that toxic energy, I felt better. And so, you know, you're watching the video and you're like, it didn't look like you were in a good place. I'm like, well, I was processing through a painful emotion. But guess what? Once I was done, I was fine. Like, it didn't ruin my day. It didn't ruin my weekend. Everything is fine. I'm okay. And that's going to happen again. And I will process through it when it happens again. And it's going to happen again and again and again. <laughs> that's not depression. That's reality. That's us being real with who we are. That's us loving ourselves because we're actually giving ourselves that voice. We're allowing ourselves to go there. We're allowing ourselves to, to feel things on a real level. And that is a great feeling. Even though it's unpleasant for a little bit, it will not be unpleasant forever. What's unpleasant was you, is when you hold on to it. So let's say before now, I start to feel antsy. I start to feel anxious. I just got triggered. I don't want to think about that memory. So I'm going to go shopping instead. So I'm going to grab you know, one of my friends. Come on, let's go to the mall. And I'm going to go. We're going to have something to eat. And I'm going to go spend three or four hundred bucks and then I'm going to come home and I'm going to try everything on. And I'm going to be so excited because it's like, wow, look at all these, you know, cool new clothes I got. And imagine where I'm going to go and just all these, all these things that I would sit there and do and distract myself with. But then guess what? I didn't connect to anything. I didn't fill that void. That's not me demonstrating self-love. The clothes are cool, and it was nice of me to buy something for myself, but that's not me demonstrating self-love. That was me running. That was me running from myself. That was me running from my fears, my feelings. And I'm not saying that you can't go shopping. That's not what I'm saying. A lot of times, even 
once you start processing through your emotions, you're going to want to do some of the same things. The intention is going to be different. Now, if I go somewhere, I'll see a shirt and I think it's cute and I'll buy it. And that's fine. Like, that's not an addiction. It's when I'm feeling not good enough. It's when I start to feel unlovable. It's when the darkness starts to kick in and it's like, oh, okay, I need to go shopping now. I start thinking about it. Where am I going to go? What am I going to buy? I need to buy a hundred different shirts in every color. And then I need to buy a hundred different pants. That's a lot different than just, oh, the shirt's cute. I'm going to get it. Okay, cool. So think about your intentions with things because that's what's going to tell you why you're actually doing it in the first place. Are you covering up? Only well, you can be honest about that. But I just wanted to show you guys that it's okay to process through your emotions and to feel them. It does not feel good, but only for a few minutes and then it's fine. I would rather feel those tears and feel that pain for little Rebecca for about 20 minutes than sit there and feel a sense of depression and emptiness and like this dark cloud that just keeps following me that I can't get rid of. I don't like that. I didn't like how that felt. It's a state of mind. It's something that we just, that we stay in because we are not connecting to love. We're not connecting to who we are. Every time you go and actually feel feelings, not emptiness, that's not a feeling. There's something below that emptiness. The emptiness starts to feel like I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable. Everybody's going to eventually leave me because I'm nothing. Those are the core wounds, not the emptiness. The emptiness will just keep you feeling empty. Well, I feel empty. Okay, well, what does that feel like? It feels like emptiness. It's like, okay, what does that feel like? It feels like darkness. Okay, you're not processing through your emotions when you keep saying that. And trust me, I've been there a thousand million times. <laughs> Go there with the emotion. I'm afraid. I feel invisible. Nobody can see me because nobody saw me growing up. I think nobody wants to be around me because I start to feel like I'm not good enough. That's fine. Because when you actually go there to that level, it goes away after you connect to it. <clears throat> Whatever memory it was that I was thinking about that day, not thinking about it anymore. Like it's not making me sad. It's not making me anxious because I release the toxic energy, release the toxic energy. You cannot release it if you don't make that connection first. What you do is it stays in you and you go shopping, you go sleep with somebody, you go have a drink, you go do drugs, you do the people pleasing, you go for something that's going to give you a thrill, you go for the self-destructive behavior patterns, you go for the crutch. That's what we do. That's what we know how to do so well, so easily. And that's fine. That's what we learned how to do to self-protect, which is why this process is we're going to tear down that wall. We're going to peel away those layers. And oh, you're going to be so uncomfortable. But you know who you're going to find when you do all that? Yourself. Your true self. That's who you're going to find when you break down all those walls and all those barriers. And you know who you are? You're a beautiful person. You're a beautiful, lovable, amazing person worthy of life, worthy of love. But the most important thing is, is that you're worthy of your own love. Nobody else can fill that void. We have to learn how to fill it. Because once you start loving who you really are and demonstrating that on a regular basis, you can't help but just want to love and receive love. You'll be able to receive love. If you don't love who you are, you can't receive it. You can only receive it, the patterns of it, really. I'm going to get into that on another video, though. I'm feeling very philosophical, so I'm going to do a philosophical video soon. But I just wanted to tell you guys, like, I'm proud of you, and it's okay to feel pain sometimes. It 
processing through that particular memory did not ruin anything for me. I'm here. I'm having a good time. I'm going to go do something. It's going to be fine. It doesn't ruin your life. What ruins your life is when you try to cover it up. So process through it. Go there. Face your fears. Face yourself. Have a little cry. Be vulnerable. It's hard to do at first. I get that. But I hope you're starting to see that it's not that bad. It really isn't. And you get through it. And every time you get through it, you get stronger. And you're just like, look, I'm still here. It's fine. And I didn't reach for the crutch. And I'm okay. So just keep keep thinking about it in that way. It's not a negative thing. It's a very positive thing, even though it feels a little unpleasant in the moment. It's fine because it turns into something very beautiful, very connected, very real. It's love. That's self-love. 